Hi, Lake County. Welcome to this edition of Top 10 Questions About COVID-19, where we answer your questions that you've submitted on social media and in our email. My name is Hannah Gehring. I'm the Communications Manager here at the Lake County Health Department, and I'll let my guest introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Sana Ahmed. I am the Medical Epidemiologist here at Lake County Health Department. Thanks for having me. All right, our first question. What have we recently learned um, from scientific research about the virus that causes COVID-19? Yeah, so there has been actually some progress made in the scientific research regarding COVID-19. In one area, they've really looked at wearing masks in public and around individuals. And what they've found um, through reviewing scientific research, the CDC has affirmed that wearing a cloth face mask is really crucial to prevent the spread of this virus. And the evidence in the scientific literature is showing that cloth face masks actually prevent infected people from infecting others. So it's very important to wear that mask. Additionally, um, there has been some progress in treatments. Um, the antiviral drug named remdesivir um, has shown in clinical trials to actually improve recovery time in hospitals for patients. And so that has actually been um, given the emergency use authorization in the United States and um, has been shipped out to hospitals, especially in the South and West that are experiencing a lot of cases in their communities. And additionally, and most importantly, there has been progress in vaccines. There has been uh, vaccine trials that are showing that um, there is efficacy against preventing infection to the virus uh, in young people. There, there are still more studies to be done, but it's quite exciting to see that there might be a vaccine in the near future. That's great to hear. What is the current COVID-19 situation in Lake County? So in Lake County, we are still experiencing widespread community transmission or spread of the virus. Um, daily case counts have been low until late June, but fairly recently we've seen a steady but slow increase since then. Um, we have noted that young adults and youth less than 30 years old have a faster rate of getting infected in Lake County right now compared to other age groups. I know that's been a topic of great conversation lately. Um, so do young people face the same risks as adults when it comes to COVID-19? So that's a good question. Young people can get infected with the virus just as the same as older age groups. Um, young people tend to have less risk for having severe illness. But just because your symptoms are milder doesn't mean that you can't spread the virus um, to other people easily. Teens and young adults tend to be more mobile, mobile and spend a lot of time with friends and attend social gatherings. So it's gonna be very important for young adults and teenagers to practice social distancing, wear face masks when attending gatherings. And what can parents do to keep their children safe. So there's a number of things that parents can do really to help children remain safe. One is to really help guide their decisions about making less risky choices for social gatherings, um, modeling good behavior in terms of practicing precautions of mask wearing and hand washing, um, talking to your children about the risks and how to stay healthy. Um, making sure that your children are practicing social distancing and masking every single time they leave the house. These are key precautions that, if taken, can keep children safe. Right, and uh, I know a lot of parents um, can help their, their children to just get more comfortable with these precautions because it might not seem like a normal thing, but if we just consistently do it, then it will become more of our normal, right? Yeah. It, really what we should be trying to do is ingraining it into their behavior to really make sure that they are aware of doing these actions to really reduce the spread of the virus. It really should just become a habit for everyone. That's great advice. Dr. Ahmed, when should a person get tested for COVID-19? A person should get tested for COVID-19 when they are experiencing symptoms such as fever, cough, sore throat, loss of the sense of taste and smell, 
other flu-like symptoms. Additionally, a person should get tested if they come in close contact to a confirmed case, regardless if they're having symptoms or not. Okay, so if you've been exposed to a case um, or someone that you think had COVID-19, then you should get a test? Yes. So if you hear either from the public health department or if you hear from the grapevine that, you know, you attended a gathering and there was a person who tested positive uh, from that gathering, then yes, we should def we definitely recommend that you go ahead and get tested. Is there a certain amount of time from when you might have been exposed to when you should get that test? Ideally, the test should be done about five to seven days after the exposure. Um, that's really when the tests that are out there in the markets can pick up the virus. Um, so ideally five to seven days after exposure. Got it. What are the different types of COVID-19 tests that are available in Lake County and which one should people choose? That's actually a really good question. There's several tests that are available and it's really important to find out what type of test you're getting performed on you. Um, the first type of test was the one that uh, originally came out when the pandemic hit. It was the viral test, which is called the PCR test. It's usually a swab in your nose. It could really go down far deep or it could just be in the nasal passage. And now this test is pretty sensitive and it detects the virus um, if you have an active infection. There's another test called the antibody test. Now that is a blood test. And that test will tell you if your body has built up what we call antibodies to fight against the virus. Now, this test can indicate if you had a past infection, but it would not necessarily capture a current infection that you're having. And when you do build up antibodies, we still don't know if those antibodies will give you long-term immunity or not. So the third type of test that we have is called the antigen test. Now that is a blood test and currently I believe they offer it where it's rapid, you can get a response right away or result right away. And the antigen test will tell you that if your body is currently fighting an infection or not. However, sometimes it doesn't detect really well if that is happening. So if you're at risk or if you've been exposed to someone who is a confirmed case, we recommend that if you do this particular test and it comes back negative, that you get a second test with the viral PCR test. Okay, so if you are exposed and you need to determine if you're actively infected with COVID-19, essentially you need to get that viral test, the PCR test, right? Yeah, that's probably the best test out there to get really to see if you have the, 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 the virus in your body. Um, you know, there's pros and cons for every test. Not every test is perfect, but that's probably the one that's going to pick it up the fastest. Recently, we've been getting a lot of questions from our residents about travel. So what preventative steps should a person take if they plan to travel out of state in the coming weeks? So that's a really good question. In general, I think we should all avoid non-essential travel to states where we are seeing a high number of cases currently. Um, additionally, non-essential travel should be avoided in individuals that are considered at high risk for getting severe illness. This would include adults with chronic medical conditions such as heart disease or lung disease. It would include um, the elderly population, individuals that have uh, poor immune systems. Um, so, for those individuals, we really don't recommend travel at all. But if you do have to go um, out of state, then what we would recommend is that you check out the place that you are traveling to um, and any other places that you're going to be stopping en route to see what the local community virus spread is like. If there's a lot of cases occurring there, etc. If you're traveling to meet a group of friends or family, you know, definitely talk to them, ask them how cautious they've been, if they've recently been exposed to anyone or if anyone is experiencing symptoms. Try to find all that information out ahead of time. And also really important is if you do travel to try to please maintain that social distance of six feet, mask. 
anytime you're outside of the house and hand wash or use alcohol-based hand rubs. So if you're traveling domestically, should, should you as a Lake County resident self-quarantine when you return to Lake County? So we at Lake County Health Department have been monitoring what has been going on across the South and Western states. And given the increase in cases across those states, the Lake County Health Department is recommending that individuals who are returning from an area with widespread community transmission self-quarantine for 14 days and monitor themselves for symptoms daily. So that could really have a big impact. Um, if uh, if someone is making the decision on if they're going to travel or not, if they're required to come back and do a 14 day self quarantine, um, that might really influence their decision. Yeah, I would say maybe think, reconsider your travel plans, especially if it's non essential to those locations and states. So, what are other circumstances um, in which a person should quarantine? So. If a person um, lives in a household where a family member or a household member tests positive for COVID-19, it is very important for that person to self-quarantine. So not only the case, but every other person in that household should self-quarantine for 14 days. The reason why is because household members are at very high risk of developing COVID-19. You've seen it time and, and time again in um, when we have been interviewing cases that household members tend to be the most affected and that at the highest risk. Um, additionally, if the health department contacts you and um, informs you that you are a close contact to a confirmed case, we will recommend self-quarantining at home for 14 days. And we encourage you to be compliant to those recommendations. Could you maybe shed a little bit more light on that and just explain what it means to self-quarantine at home? Sure. So when a person is asked to self-quarantine at home, it means that that person should stay home and not leave their house for 14 days, nor should they have visitors come to visit them. They should be socially distancing from their family, so having their own um, area kind of trying to keep separate from other family members just in case they develop symptoms and practicing good hand hygiene in the house. The last question we have, if you test negative for COVID-19, does that mean that you no longer need to quarantine? So if you are asked to quarantine for 14 days because of a potential exposure, you likely were a close contact to a person who was infected with COVID-19. And a negative test does not shorten your quarantine period. The virus can take up to 14 days to be detectable in your body by any test that we've talked about. So it's really important to continue the quarantine period through the 14 days while you monitor for symptoms. And if at any point you develop symptoms during that 14 day period, you should get retested. Great advice. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed, for answering all of these questions from Lake County residents. Um, Lake County residents, if you have additional questions we haven't been able to answer, please send us an email at COVID-19 at LakeCountyIL.gov. Everyone stay healthy and take care. Take care.